Hi, and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology, data analysis, and visualization. So in this screencast, we're going to be looking at calculating um, inferential statistics and how we can make some scatter plots. So the objectives for this screencast are to firstly to be able to calculate uh, t-tests in Python. Secondly, are to be able to use a simulation approach to understand some uh, key properties of statistics, that is uh, false positives and issues concerning multiple comparisons. Also want you to know how to be able to create a figure to visualize relationships via scatter plots and to be able to evaluate correlations in Python. Okay, so switching to Spider as usual. So the first thing we're going to look at today is how we can compare two independent means. So this is using an independent samples t-test. So as before, um, we're going to simulate the data that we might get from an experiment. Here we're going to use a between subjects design with two conditions, 30 participants per condition, and an effect size of uh, 0.8, which is uh, typically known as a, a large effect size. So let's start by, by simulating this data. So as usual, we start by importing NumPy. Now we're going to define some relevant variables. Firstly, n per group equals 30. Just to indicate there's going to be 30 participants in each group. Now we're going to define the, the means of each group. So we're going to set the group mean for the first group to be 0 and the group mean of the second to be 0 0.8. So the other thing we need is the standard deviation. So we set the group sigmas. So we'll set them to both be 1. So here we're simulating a large effect size between these two groups. So now let's just calculate a variable n groups, which is going to be the length of our group means list. Now we're going to initialize the data that we're going to generate. So as you recall, we can use this empty um, function to generate an empty array. So we want it to have 30 rows, n per group, and two columns. So we're going to fill this up with our, with our data, but to start with, we'll fill it up with not a number. Okay, so now we want to simulate the data from each of these two groups. So we'll do a loop for i group in range n groups. Now we're going to fill in all the columns, all the rows, sorry, for this particular column. And we're going to use a random sample from a normal distribution with a location or mean as the group means the i group the scale the standard deviation as the group sigmas i group and how ma many of them we want there to be n per group and finally, as, as we did before, we'll just check that we've done what we thought we did by using an assert statement to say that the sum of the values that are nan in data is zero. Okay, so let's just check that we're doing everything correctly here by saving and running. Okay, and that's completed fine. So now we have um, 30 uh, data points from um, group A, 30 data points from group B, and what we want to do is perform an independent samples t-test to test whether the um, differences in the group means are significantly different from one another. So we can do this quite easily in Python by using some functionality in the scipy.stats package. So the first thing we need to do is make that available. So import scipy.stats and now we can calculate a result as scipy.stats.ttestind. So this is where we're saying do a t-test with independent groups, where we set group A to be all the rows from condition 0, B to be all the rows from condition 1. So now scipy will then go away and take this data compute the t-test and in return a two-item list. So the first item in result is the t-statistic, 
and the second item is the associated p-value. So let's print those out. So print t result 0, print p result 1. Okay, if we save that and run it, you can see that for this particular um, simulation, the t value was minus 2.25 with an associated p value of 0 0.02. So you can see how, how straightforward it is to compute um, these independent samples t-tests in Python once you have the data in this array format. Okay, so now we're going to look at, at t-tests in a slightly different way. And we're going to try and um, develop an intuition for, for why uh, multiple comparisons might be an issue when doing uh, statistical inference. So to simplify things, we're going to switch to a one-sample design where we're just looking to see if the uh, mean of a group of data is significantly different from zero. So in contrast to this example, we're going to um, sample from a population where the mean is actually zero. So we're going to do a large number of these experiments and see how often we reject the null hypothesis that the means are zero. So let's start again. So the first thing, let's define our n again. So we'll have 30 in this case. So we'll have the population mean is going to be 0. Population sigma is going to be 1. So now, as I said, we're going to do a large number of simulations. So let's set the number of simulations to be 10,000. Now what we want to do is store the p-value associated with each of these simulations. So let's make an array called p-values that will be empty and the size is the number of simulations and as usual we'll fill it with not a number okay now now we want to loop over our simulations each time we want to generate some data from a normal distribution with a mean, that is our population mean, scale that is our population sigma, and a size that is our number of participants. Okay, now for each of these simulated experiments, we want to perform a t-test. So now instead of IND for independent, we're gonna do one SAMP, and we'll set the data and it also needs to know what we're comparing against. Okay, so we're using sci-fi.stats here, so we need to import it. Okay, and now we need to save the p-value. P For this simulation is result 1. And finally, let's just check that we've filled up this array as we expected. Okay. So now if we save that and run it, okay, so that's all completed, completed okay. So now let's think about what we've done here. So what we've done is we've generated 10,000 p-values from a situation in which we know that the mean was actually zero. So what we're interested in is how many of these 10,000 experiments give us a p-value of less than 0.05 which would call us to, to, lead, to reject the null hypothesis even though there's no uh, reason to. So this would be a, a false positive. So just have a think about what, what, this, what you would think that this value will be. And by doing that, let's compute it. So the number of times that we've rejected the null is the sum of the times where the p-values are less than 0.05. So that's a number, so let's convert it to a proportion. So the proportion of simulations in which we reject the null is this number of the null rejected divided by the number of simulations, which we convert to a, a decimal before doing the um, division. Finally, let's print this proportion null reject. Okay, if we save that and run it, you can see that we're about 0.05. So that is this, the t-test the is doing its job, so the, the false positive rate is about 0.05. Okay, so what we're going to investigate now, uh, what the consequences might be is if we have two conditions instead of one, 
and in both cases we're interested in whether the means are significantly different from zero. So let's do a couple of modifications to our code. Firstly, we'll add another variable called ncons, set to that to be two. Now our p-values, rather than just being the number of simulations, we'll also have two columns. Okay, and now when we do our simulation, rather than um, sampling n uh, uh, values from this distribution, we're going to sample an array with n rows and two columns. And now we need to add an extra loop to loop over our condition. And now we'll indent these two and we'll change our data here to be, let's put it on a new line, to be all the participants for this particular condition. Okay, so now when we save the p-value, we want to save it for this simulation, but also for this condition. Okay, so now our p-values is 10,000 simulations for each of these two conditions. So what we're going to look at now is what, um, what the consequences are if we're um, open to rejecting either of those null hypotheses, either for the first group or for the, for the second group. So what we can do is define a variable called either rejected, which will be, we use this function called any, so I'll explain in a second p-values is less than 0.05, axis equals 1. So what we're doing here is saying calculate where in this p-values array it's less than 0.05, then use this any function over axis equals 1 to look at which any returns true if either, if any of the values in the list are true. So what we're saying is, so look at the first row, if either of the p-values is less than 0.05 for the first condition or the second condition, return true for that row. So now what we can do then is look at the number of wrong line. The number of null rejected is now the sum of this either rejected array. Okay, so now let's save this and run it. You can see that now our um, false positive rate for um, rejecting either of these null hypotheses is now at about 0.1. So that is by being um, open to either of these conditions being different from zero, then we're um, having this um, effect on our, on our false positive rate. So this is the, the uh, crux of the multiple comparisons problem. Okay, so now we're going to move on to another topic, and that's how we can relate two variables. So this is uh, correlations and how we can visualize them. So once again, we're going to start by generating some data that one might get from a, a real psychology experiment. So we're going to have 30 participants on which we obtain two measurements for each participant. So in this experiment, there will be a large negative correlation. So a, an R value of minus 0.5. So let's start by simulating this data. So first we'll define our N. We'll define a true correlation to be minus 0.5. Now don't worry too much about this, but this is just a, a way that we can uh, generate uh, random numbers that follow this, this correlation. 1.0, true. Okay, and now let's generate our data. So data is then p.random. This time we're going to sample from a multivariate normal where the mean is going to be zero in both cases. The covariance is going to be this thing that we just specified that I said not to worry about. And the size is going to be the number of participants. So now this is going to generate us a 30 by two array. So let's just save it and let's just check that that is indeed the case. Now if we run that, you can see, yep, 30 by two. Okay, so before we actually get started on how we can calculate correlation coefficients and test whether they're significantly different from zero, let's first have a look at how we can visualize these relationships. So we're going to use a scatter plot to relate the data from the first condition, which we'll put on the x-axis, 
with the data from the second condition, which we'll put on the y-axis. So the first thing we're going to do is to set up our figure framework like we've done in the past by importing views and now we'll add the, the, the typical framework. Add a page. Set the width to be one column. And the height to be the same as the width. Okay, so the to the page we'll add a graph. And we'll add some axes. And as usual, we'll wait for close. Right, so now if we save it and run it, let's make sure we're going okay so far. Yep, so we've got our, our figure added to our page. So creating a scatter plot is a fairly straightforward extension of a figure that we've made in a previous lesson where we use the XY figure type. So all we need to do is to tell views about the data for the two conditions, make an XY figure element, and bind the data from the two conditions to the X and Y axes. So let's start by telling views about our data. So we'll set data, let's call it X data, will be our data from the first column. Set data Y data will be the data from the second column. Okay, so now views knows about our data, so now let's add a XY graph and we tell it the X data is the data referred to by the string X data. The Y data is the data referred to by the string Y data. Alright, so now if we save that and run it. Okay, so we've made a little bit of progress. Now we can see all our dots there on the figure and you can sort of get a sense of a bit of a, a negative correlation going on here. Before we move on, we'll, we'll make the usual formatting changes that we do. So we'll start by using a new, new property that we haven't seen before. This is a useful one called the aspect. So this is the um, ratio of the width to the height of the graph, and here we'll set it to one. So this is useful for scatter plots where you want the, the horizontal and vertical axes to be the same size. Now we'll just set some of the usual values, the, the padding on the axis. We'll work out the extreme value as the maximum of the absolute value of the data and plus the padding. We'll turn off the border of the graph. Usual we want things to be in Ariel. Set the minimum value. So you'll notice that we're setting these minimum and maximum to be the same for both the horizontal and vertical axes. Finally, we'll give the axes some labels. Obviously, this would be more informative if they're actual data rather than simulated, but they'll do for us. Alright, so let's save it and run it. Okay, so what have I done wrong here? I've forgotten an R. Okay. Alright. So now we can see a little bit better, we've got some better, better spacing. You can see that I've forgotten to forget a couple of formatting values. So let's go back and set some more. Turn off the mirror. 
and the ticks to outer. Okay, let's save and run it again. There we go, so that's looking better. So you can see it's, it's looking a bit nicer, but one problematic aspect is that you can see that successive data points are joined by lines. So there's no actual um, correspondence between successive data points in our, in our example. So we really want to get rid of those lines. So it's straightforward. We just want to set the x, y as property plot line. We'll turn it off. All right, we'll save it and run it. Okay, so now we have a nice visualization of our correlation between these two variables. One final potential issue that can come up, come up with these sorts of uh, scatter plots is what to do when some of the dots overlap with one another. So with only 30 um, participants, it's not really all that uh, evident here. So let's, let's make it uh, quite obvious by doing a, large, doing a large increase in the number of participants. So now if we save that and run it. Okay, so now you can see we have a lot more dots, a lot more potential for dots to overlap, and it's sort of hard to see where there are multiple dots. So one solution that works quite well is to make each of the dots a little bit transparent. So that way when um, dots overlap, overlap with one another, you can sort of see by a change in the intensity that there are more than one dot in that position. So a downside is that uh, figures with transparency can cause um, hassles with PDF format. So you're almost, you're restricted to using a bitmap based image like PNG if you want to use this transparency approach. So let's have a look at what that would look like. Again, it's quite straightforward. All we need to do is set the XY's marker fill dot transparency to be, let's say, 60. So a transparency of zero would be um, the default, so completely opaque. Transparency of 100 would be completely invisible. And that's, so that's, that's the fill of each uh, point. Also want the line, its transparency to be the same, to so be 60. Okay, now if we save that and run it, Now you can see by having these, uh, some, the dots have this transparency, you can see as the um, sections get darker, that corresponds to more overlapping dots in that particular region. Okay, so now we've got a good visualization. Let's go ahead and calculate the um, Pearson's correlation coefficient. So to do so, we can use a function, again, part of scipy.stats called Pearson R. So this function takes two arguments, the X and Y, and returns a two item list. The first item is the Pearson's correlation, so this R statistic, and a p-value. So let's go ahead and generate that. I want to import scipy.stats. Okay, so now right at the end here, let's calculate the result of running scipy.stats.pearsonr, where x is all the data from the first group, Y is all the data from the second condition, I should say. Okay, so now the R value is the result, the first item in the result list. So now what we'll do is we could print it to the output over here, but let's note it directly onto the figure. So we can do this by adding another um, type to the, to the graph, and this is a label. Let's call it rfig equals graph dot add label. So the first thing we want to do is to set the um, text for the label. So we'll set it to r equals, and we'll set it to the r with two decimal places. So in terms of positioning, we'll set the horizontal position to be 0.65, set the vertical position to be up near the top, and we'll set its font to be matching with all the other um, um, fonts that we have in the figure. Okay, so now if we save that and run it, 
Okay, so now you can see that we have our, our figure with our um, R value on the figure, but we've got the vertical location in the wrong spot. So if you can see, what have I done here? So this is a common mistake in views. Um, I do it quite a lot. It's forgetting that we don't want to set just the Y pos validity property. We want to set this dot val. So now if we save it and run it, now that looks better. So now we have our nice visualization of the, the scatter plot. We've calculated the Pearson's correlation and we're putting it right on the figure itself. Okay, so looking back on the objectives for this lesson. So we've learned how we can calculate t-tests in Python. So we looked at both independent samples t-tests and one sample t-tests. We also looked at this simulation approach to try and understand a bit more about this concept of false positives and some of the issues around multiple comparisons. Then we looked about how we can use scatter plots to uh, visualize relationships in figures and how we can evaluate correlations in Python. All right, I'll see you in the next screencast.